guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. We are going to be doing a current favorites video today, which will include favorites from a bunch of different categories like makeup, skincare, hair care, body care, and lifestyle. So let's jump on into it. <sighs> I gotta roll up these sleeves. It's like too cold for a regular long sleeve, but too hot for a sweater. Welcome to fall in Minnesota. Let's start off with skincare products first. I have two different cleansers that I want to share, and this one is the newest addition to my collection. It is the Prequel Glenzer Non-Drying Glycerin Cleanser. If you are not familiar with the brand Prequel, this was created by a dermatologist and fellow content creator named Dr. Sam Ellis. I did already do an entire deep dive review on the brand and their initial launch, so I'll list that below if you haven't seen that yet, but this was definitely the highlight of the products that the brand came out with that I tested. It contains 50% glycerin, which is incredible. That is just something that is going to be unbelievably hydrating on the skin, in addition to inulin, aloe juice, oat kernel flour, and lecithin. And the reason why I love this so much is because the consistency feels amazing. It's incredibly unique. I don't have any other cleansers like this, and I've never even tried a cleanser like this at that. It's super lightweight and jelly-like, but also at the same time kind of like slippery and slidey and as I lather this into my skin it almost starts to have like a snail mucin effect where when I put my fingers on my face and then pull them apart you can like see the product kind of sliming out. It's just such an interesting product. I feel like there are a lot of hydrating cleansers out there that claim to be non-stripping, non-irritating, non-drying, very hydrating or moisturizing. But in doing all of those things, they don't leave my skin feeling as cleansed as I want it to be. So that is why I really love this cleanser. Cleanses enough, but feels just oh so replenishing. We are going to be playing fetch throughout this video. If you see her tail in the background, if you see this flying around, that's why. All right, honey, go get it. The second cleanser I want to share is the Cetaphil Gentle Clear Clarifying Acne Cream Cleanser. This has been a staple in my morning skincare routine, and I wanted to share it as part of this trio of products I've been using for the past several months now to help to prevent breakouts and also get rid of texture. I feel like these three things added together have made a really big difference in my skin. And that starts off with this cleanser right here. It contains 2% salicylic acid, aloe juice, and green tea extract. It has a nice soft cream consistency, and I really enjoy using this in the shower. I will apply it, leave it on for several minutes while I am going about the rest of my shower routine, and then I will rinse it off. The second product is one that I shared in my last favorites video. It is the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Breakout Concentrated Derma Serum. I don't wanna to spend too much time on this since I've already given you the entire spiel about this product, but I did wanna make sure that I was mentioning it in this video since it's definitely part of that trio that I feel has really helped me with breakouts and texture prevention. Just in case you didn't see that last favorites video, I will quickly highlight the ingredients of this. It contains 2% salicylic acid, 3% lactic acid, niacinamide, zinc PCA, aloe, hyaluronic acid, and a postbiotic ferment. Freaking amazing. And the final product in that trio is my Skin Smart Antimicrobial Facial Cleanser, which is not actually a cleanser. It is a facial mist. This is a mist that contains hypochlorous acid, which is an ingredient that's really beneficial in the prevention of breakouts due to its antimicrobial effect. I did talk about this in that skincare routine update video because some of you guys let me know that Dr. Lee actually posted an entire YouTube video talking all about hypochlorous acid. And in that video, they said that you shouldn't be using any hypochlorous acid products with products that contain antioxidants because the hypochlorous acid will essentially cancel out the effect of those antioxidant ingredients. However, when I posted about that on Instagram, Instagram Reels, Dr. Sam Ellis actually left a comment on that sharing a different point of view that I wanted to share with you guys. She said, I don't think you need to necessarily use it at an alternate time of day as long as the hypochlorous acid has dried down, i.e. completed its oxidation. <laughs> what was that? Completed its oxidation activity before going in with vitamin C or a retinoid. So similar to what I was saying in that skincare routine update video, there are a lot of different points of view on skincare and when we should and shouldn't be using certain ingredients and what we should and shouldn't be mixing those ingredients with. I'm personally never tied to any information that I share with you guys. What I prioritize is sharing anything that is relevant, updated, and from an expert or a legitimate 
legitimate source. So considering Dr. Sam Ellis is also a board certified dermatologist, just like the dermatologist from Dr. Lee, I thought I would share that again as a different perspective. So do with that what you will. I think the best thing to do as always is just do what works best for you. But I don't know that I feel the need to be using this in the middle of the day, several hours after my morning skincare routine and before my nighttime skincare routine now. What I have been doing that seems to work well for me is spraying this earlier in the morning because I wake up at the crack of dawn. And then I will leave that on my skin while I work out, go for a walk with Elsie. And then after that, several hours later is when I go ahead and do my morning skincare routine. So far that's been working, but maybe I'll feel the need to kind of alter that in the future. I'll keep you guys posted, but regardless, love this product. Let's talk about the moisturizer that I definitely used the most in my morning skincare routine over the past few months. It is the CeraVe Ultralight Moisturizing Gel, which is a newer launch from them. I feel like I just love everything about this, which is why <laughs> it's almost completely gone. I have used the heck out of this. This contains niacinamide, ceramides, hyaluronic acid, cholesterol, vitamin E, and biosaccharide gum. And the texture is very lightweight and a true gel. But unlike other moisturizers that have a similar consistency and then kind of like go watery and thin out as you rub them into the skin, this maintains the same kind of, I don't want to say thickness because it's obviously not thick, but it doesn't go really thin and watery as you rub it in. It kind of just maintains that soft gel feel, which I feel ended up making this more hydrating and more moisturizing than some of my other gel moisturizers. So I really loved that. It's perfect for wearing underneath a thicker soft sunscreen and just works so, so well for layering purposes in skincare, especially if you're putting makeup on top of it. I just love it. But of course we are starting to enter colder weather months. So if you are looking for something thicker, more occlusive, creamier, I'm going to list a video below where I share my top 10 barrier creams and another video where I share six moisturizers that I was really loving in the winter time last year. Cause maybe you'll want to buy one of those instead. But if you are someone that leans oily year round, despite how dry and cold it is outside, or you're just someone who wants a really lightweight moisturizer to wear underneath a sicker, a sicker sunscreen, mm -mm, a thicker sunscreen or a complexion product, then maybe you'll still be interested in this. Last for skincare is the Tacobo Bio Watery Sun Cream, which is an SPF 50. This contains next generation chemical filters, including Uvinyl T150, Maxerol SX, Uvinyl A+, Polysilicone 15, and Tinazor Bess. On top of that, it also contains niacinamide, Skullcap Brew, Almus Extract, hyaluronic acid and adenosine. This does contain added fragrance. It is the very last ingredient in this sunscreen. And when I was talking about this in my last kind of giant Asian sunscreen review in that video, I smelled it like this and I was like, mm, yeah, that just squirted on me. Ew. Oh, and on my shirt. Good. I should actually probably check and make sure I don't have sunscreen on my face. Oh, I do. Okay. Anyway, in that video, I was smelling it like this and I was like, yeah, it doesn't really have a fragrance. Even though I literally had smells kind of like plants question mark written down in my notes. And I felt so bad after because my sister said she purchased this because of my review and then she got it and she was like, no, it smells like and I forget what she said, like plants, a greenhouse, something like that. So she ended up not liking it. And I was like, oh my God, I cannot believe I made that mistake. So I wanted to make sure that I clarified that here. It does in fact kind of smell like plants, question mark. Kind of like if you were to roll up into Bachman's, that kind of vibe, but it's not something that lingers on your skin once it's applied and fully dried down. The smell does totally disappear, at least for me. So. It's not something that bothers me. And if I'm gonna be totally honest, while I hated it at first, it has oddly grown on me, but that may just be because I love this sunscreen so much. And so now I associate this smell with the sunscreen. Cause again, normally I would not be into this kind of thing. The reason why I love this so much is because of the texture of this product. It's very, very liquidy. It has kind of that like classic runny Asian sunscreen texture. And I would consider this to be a hydrating gel-like lotion, but it has this really unique, almost slippery quality to it that I don't feel any of my other sunscreens have. It just feels so nice and like slippy, slidey, soft on my skin without being too much of that to where it's difficult to apply. It's very easy to apply. It dries down really beautifully into a natural to naturally glowy finish. 
all around amazing. I have been obsessed with this. And the other reason why I love it so much is because I discovered it is perfect underneath makeup. It helps my makeup to last without going patchy. So if you're looking for something like that, this may be for you. Oh wait, I guess technically this is last for skincare. It is the Laneige Lip Glowy Balm. This is a product I included in my favorite lip products in every single category video. I will list that below for sure. I was telling you guys in that video that I just was not expecting to like this. I didn't wanna buy it for the longest time. But after receiving it in PR, I was like, oh dang, I was very wrong about this. It just feels like a luxury lip balm. It is incredibly soft and smooth and comfortable. And oh my God, I'm obsessed. It has a lot of nice ingredients as well. Shea butter, Muromuro butter, and tons of different plant extracts like lysium fruit, raspberry, blueberry, soapberry, coffee, cranberry, and strawberry. This is the berry flavor. I haven't tried any of the others, but I will say nothing else really stands out to me is something that I feel like I would love, which is such a bummer. I would die to have something like this in a vanilla or cake or salted caramel scent. Then if that were the case, this would probably be the only lip balm I ever wore again. Oh, I love it. All right, let's move on to hair. Oh, speaking of hair, should I address this? I wore heatless curls overnight last night and then I took Elsie and Quincy on a walk and they are now both sleeping in this room. I'll show them to you at the end of the video. And thankfully we made it through the entire walk without rain but at the very end when I was going back to my car it started downpouring and my hair was like pulled up in a little clip bun so it obviously got wet but like not soaked all the way through and just left me with this I don't know what this is weirdness anyway um okay back to this my first hair favorite is the L'Oreal Everpure Frizzify Conditioner which is something that I have been reaching for constantly recently it just makes my hair feel so soft and silky and I love L'Oreal conditioners that's no secret that's something that I told you guys in my deep dive on L'Oreal but something about this I don't know what it is just like really really works well with my hair it contains amodimethicone and marula oil and has a really nice texture very conditioning not overly heavy not balmy not waxy none of those gross things it's just a dream and it's so affordable can you believe it if you are wondering how this compares to the bond strengthening conditioner and some of the other ones from l'oreal i've shared before I would say that this, I mean, similar vibes to where I get good results, but I think this would be good for you if you are somebody that is not dealing with extreme damage and like you don't really color your hair much, you don't use a ton of heat on your hair, but you still want a conditioner that's going to make your hair feel soft, <laughs> feel soft and silky. If that is the case, then I think that you will enjoy this. It still will work for you if you have damaged hair, but because it's not specifically you know, formulated for that purpose. That's my two cents. I have also been loving DP Hughes Gloss. This is a semi-permanent hair color and deep conditioner. And I had never used any at-home hair coloring product before I tested this out. I've always been so, so hesitant to do that because I feel like I've just seen horror stories where people end up with color that looks crazy and it has taken me so, so long to get to the color that I have today. So I've always been too scared to mess with it, but this is fabulous and because it's semi-permanent, it's not something that's going to mess up the color that you have. If anything, it's just amazing at helping to kind of refresh your color in between salon visits. So so I use the shade medium blonde when I use this and I feel like it just brings back that like rich warm depth to my hair that definitely starts to fade as time goes on. When you have bleach in your hair, at least when I have bleach in my hair, I feel like that is the thing that pulls through no matter what. Like all of the beautiful glossing that my stylist does to add that like warm honey bronze color, that starts to fade and then like the bleach stays chillin'. So I feel like this really helps to bring back some of that warmth and just again, like revives my color before I go back to the salon. It is so dark in here right now. I apologize for the like dark, moody vibes or maybe not because i love vibes like that especially when we have halloween going on but like i said rainy day okay my other hair favorites are just hair accessories so first up is the jaw clip claw clip whatever you call it that absolutely it changed my life this is something that i got from amazon and i mean ah! what in the world where did that come from it's okay, honey. 
Should anyone? <laughs> you guys. The way that moth just absolutely tried to attack me. Literally, where did that come from? I feel ill. <laughs> no, my heart's racing. Okay, focus. I don't even remember what I said. I'm so freaked out. And I have full body chills right now. Okay, these jaw clips. So I got them on Amazon and they come in a pack of really cute, just like neutral aesthetic colors, soft matte. They look really cute with this like boxy, kind of open vibe. But the main reason why I'm so obsessed with these is because of the grip that they have on my hair. They hold my hair in place on like any other similarly sized jaw clip I have ever tried. As you may or may not know, I have always used the scoonchy jaw clips. Is it scoonchy, scunchy? I don't know. For my jaw clip bun that I wear constantly and these have replaced that because they just hold my hair in place so much better. It doesn't ever slip out of the clip like it used to with the other one. Incredible if you have a lot of hair. They also do have larger size versions of it if you want, you know, that like cuter look. Something different. I feel like there's a million different styles of jaw clips these days, but very cute. And my last hair favorite is this jumbo velvet scrunchie. So I throw this in my hair. I'll just do it now because I'm sweating and it'd be nice to get my hair off my back. I put this in my hair when I want to have my hair up in a bun and I don't feel like having a clip in it, which just sometimes I don't feel like it. I don't want to feel the clip in my hair. Instead, I want a scrunchie. But as you guys know, I am very careful about how I wear my hair. So this is obviously not something I'm doing in public because it's not cute. But if I'm sitting in my apartment, working, you know, things of that nature, I'll put my hair in a little bun like this and then just pull the scrunchie over top. I will say this is not gonna like hold your hair in place, which is why I love it. So don't expect to just wrap this around a bun one time and have it hold through anything except for just sitting there. But in saying that, that obviously means it's incredibly gentle on the hair. And I feel like I have such a hard time finding scrunchies that like fit my hair just right and are actually soft and gentle because a lot of scrunchies will have a soft material, but the hair tie inside them is too tight and too like rough to where it kind of defeats the purpose of using a scrunchie. So this has a really like loose, stretchable, thin hair tie inside. And then it's this nice, soft, velvety material. I will say, Something that I have been struggling with more lately is how I wear my hair at night when I go to bed. As you may or may not know, I feel like I literally just said that. Oh well. I used to always wear my hair in a low loose twist, which worked amazing for me for several years, but I have been getting more and more layers recently. And at first it wasn't an issue because I feel like I didn't have like really I don't know, I didn't have short layers, but now my layers are definitely shorter than they first were, and that is making it a lot more difficult to figure out how to wear my hair at night and have it like stay in that style throughout the night. So I've been thinking behind the scenes about how to solve that. I'll get back to you when I figure that out. First up is the Milk Hydro Grip Primer, which what went viral like three years ago at this point, something like that. I know I am very late to the game here, but I've been testing out a lot of primers behind the scenes. And in that process, I have fallen in love with this one. I love that it doesn't do anything different to my complexion in terms of altering the level of glow or making it look more matte or even blurring or anything. It simply just grips onto my makeup without changing anything else. And it layers really well on top of my other skincare products, which is an absolute must for me. So I get it. It's worth the hype. Next up is the Lancome Lash Primer, which has just rocked my world. Look at my lashes today. I have it on underneath my mascara. This is something that makes my lashes so much longer. It really is amazing the difference that it makes. And when I use this, I don't have to layer up different kinds of mascara to get the result that I want to go for. I only have to use this and then my mascara. And I know that you may be like, okay, why does it matter? Because you're using two products either way, but that can be an issue when you're playing around with new mascaras because then you have to find two different mascaras that play well together versus this, which works with everything and then I can just go ahead and test that mascara by itself. So I love it and it makes my lashes just look, I think, even more amazing than my layering method. Moving on to blush, there are two different products that have just, what was I gonna say? I was gonna say blown me out of the water, I think, but 
why would I say that? That sounds so weird. Both of these blushes blew me away. Sure. First is the Givenchy Prism Libre blush in the shade Taffeta Rose. Taffeta Rose. All the words that they use for these products are just a little hard for me to pronounce. This is such a beautiful blush and ugh. It's falling on my laptop. There we go. Yes, there are, I'm sure, plenty of other blushes out there that give you a similar color on your cheeks. Well, maybe not like several. This is just such a beautiful pink. But even if the color isn't necessarily the most unique of all time, what I love about this is the color combined with all of the other qualities or characteristics that this blush has because the way that it meshes into my cheeks kind of like melts in once I have it on for a couple of hours, just looks beautiful. At first when I apply it, it does look more dry slash matte, but it'll just kind of like meld in within a couple of hours and again, look beautiful. It just, I don't know, it has something special to it and it lasts forever. Like it's probably the longest wearing blush that I own. It's just so, so good. So I am definitely going to be purchasing one more shade in this. I already know the one that I wanna buy. I've been thinking about it. I do wish that they changed the packaging so that we were able to access all four of the shades and we didn't just have to mix them all together, but for now, it still is great. And the other product that I have been obsessed with for blush is actually a highlighter. It is the House Labs Bio Radiant Gel Highlighter. I purchased this because Taylor Wynn was raving about it and she's right, this is fabulous. This is in the shade Rose Quartz, which is this gorgeous pink frosty shade, look at it. And this does work beautifully as a highlight, but I personally love to use it as a blush topper and then I get that blush lighter effect. I am wearing the combination of these two blushes today. Givenchy first, Givenchy first. <laughs> I will never know how to pronounce that and I just really don't care. And then House Labs on top and oh, I just love, love, love it. I feel like this freshens up anything that I have underneath it and I love the glow. Okay, this is a lip liner I've talked about tons before, so it's not this specific liner formula, even though you guys know it's an all-time favorite for me. Instead, it is the shade. So I never purchased this, wait, did I say what it is? The Sephora Rouge Gel Lip Liner. Okay. I never purchased this shade because this outer packaging just always looked like it would be too pale for me. I was like, mm, that's not gonna work. It is the lightest shade that they have, 01 The Nudist. So I just always assumed it would be too pale for me, but it is actually my literal perfect your lips but better lip liner. Check this out. Oh my God. Like that's the color of my lips. Just like a little bit darker. It's perfect. And my absolute favorite thing to do lately has been wearing this with a lip tint or a lip stain and then topping it with some sort of gloss. That is what I have on my lips here today. And whenever I have something like this on, I am always asked several times what the heck is on my lips. Something about the lip tint slash stain with the clear gloss on top just has a more natural look to it than other things that are a little bit more pigmented. Obviously, if you were going to be using a full coverage, full pigment, like really bright, bold lip tint, that would totally change the look. The one that I am wearing here today is the Victoria Beckham Bitten Lip Tint in the shade Cherie. Cherie? Cherie. And then I have the Amicole Lip Oil on top in Reflection, which is just clear. This has definitely been a go-to combo for me. Oh, I love it. But again, it can definitely work with other shades. It's just like this type of thing. It's really good. Also, I will say that this Victoria Beckham tint is definitely not as long lasting as other stains that I own. So if that is something that you're looking for in a lip tint, then I would go for something else. But otherwise, if you're okay with a little bit of a faster fade, but a beautiful, gorgeous color, then it's worth it. My last makeup favorite is absolutely, without a doubt, the Naturium Phyto Glow Lip Balm. I own all shades of these, but my favorites are these right here. This lip balm is just so cushy, so glossy and juicy looking on the lips and has the perfect amount of pigment in such beautiful shades. My absolute favorite out of all of these is definitely Plum, which of course looks just like the lip color I'm wearing. 
It's just a really nice sheer mauve. My lips are literally gonna be dripping in gloss by the end of this. But these other shades, Camellia, Petal, and Hibiscus are all gorgeous as well. Honestly, every single one of their shades is beautiful. It just depends on what you're looking for. I really hope they come out with more neutrals. That would really get me going. But even as is, such a beautiful lip balm. All right. Let's move on to body care. I have two different fragrances that I want to share. The first is the Fleur Father Figure Eau de Parfum. This is not the type of fragrance that I normally go for. It is a warm, woodsy scent that is supposed to be earthy with notes of lush fig, jasmine dew, and sandalwood. But, oh my God, I love this. I have been reaching for this over literally everything else. Even though it is like, you know, earthy and woodsy, it still is, kind of fresh, like it's a lighter way to do that. It's not like a really, I don't know. It's not an intense, overly potent, woodsy scent. Oh my goodness, it's so good. And the other thing I've been reaching for nonstop is definitely not new by any means. It has been a fan favorite for a while, I feel like, but I just recently grew to appreciate it. And it is the Julia Has A Gun, Not A Perfume. So this is supposed to be a warm and spicy sheer fragrance with Cetalox, Cetalox. It's described as a minimalist, fresh and clean fragrance that is ideal for those who don't normally wear perfume. It's composed of a single note called Cetalox, which is usually used in perfumery as a base note. And they also have highlighted on here that this is a layerable scent, which is how I have been wearing this with pretty much every perfume I've been putting on. I have been adding this to it and I feel like it just brings it to a whole, a whole other level. I really, 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 really love it. And wow, that was a lot. I feel like this is supposed to be kind of similar to the Glossier U perfume where it's just one note. Is that actually the same thing? Let me look. Different. Yeah, that Glossier U perfume smells so good on so many people, but not me. It just didn't work on me and this one does. Mm -hmm. Do you want to say hello to everybody? Not quite done yet, but soon, maybe you could go play with Quincy Boy. What do you think of that? I love you so much. Don't lick my face. It's not good for you. How are you doing, baby? You doing okay? Okay, go play with your cousin. Next up is this barrier cream. The brand is... What? Okay. So this is something that I found on Amazon and I was inspired to look for it because I felt like I was having a really hard time getting my feet to look normal when I put self tanner on. I felt like every lotion and cream I was testing out just wasn't right. And my self tanner was clinging really bad in certain areas and looking super patchy and uneven. And while I don't think that you need, you know, something that's specifically labeled as a barrier cream in order to use self tanner on your feet, like you can definitely just use a lotion. The pro to this is that it was specifically formulated for that purpose. So it works well for that purpose, you know? Versus like some creams are gonna be too thick. Some lotions are gonna be too lightweight. Some are gonna like rub weird with the self tanner. I just wanted to find something that was foolproof and this is definitely that for me. It's not something that like feels particularly good. I mean, it's fine. It doesn't feel bad, but if this was not for barrier cream purposes, I would never be like, oh my God, this is so amazing and silky. But again, that's not the purpose. It is so my self tanner doesn't look so crazy. And I have to say when I have used this and then just gone in with a little bit of self tan on a brush, brush that over it, I have ended up with feet that look pretty much the same as when I get an airbrush tan. Nice. Okay, I put this in body even though it could also go in the skincare category. It is Hustle Butter and it is a luxury tattoo care butter that I originally purchased for the purpose of applying it on my eyebrows to help my microblading to last longer. I'm still using it for that purpose every single night and I really like that this hasn't caused any issues for me. It's not like I'm getting like texture or breakouts or anything weird around the skin where I apply this just works for that and that's it. But I also started using this as a cuticle cream. Show you guys the texture of this. I'm going to put some on right now actually. And it's Perfect for me for that because number one, then I can just throw this on while I'm already putting it on. Well, not at the same time, but like while I already have it out after applying it to my brows. And that just makes me way more likely to use it. But number two, I love that this isn't 
too greasy or too ointmenty because I was trying to use the CeraVe healing ointment on my cuticles for a really long time and I think it's great for that purpose but I felt like I just I wouldn't want to reach for it because it wouldn't fully dry down and I felt like it was getting on my sheets and like getting greasy on my phone this does not do that at all to me this actually like dries down, but feels so nice and has great ingredients and is just a great little cuticle cream. All right, <laughs> my hair is just really driving me nuts. You know what? We're doing a clip bun. Need this off my neck. The instant release. It was so cold in here earlier and now I'm sweating. Okay, so this is the OPI Repair Mode Bond Building Nail Serum. And I told you guys recently that I had to get my nails removed because I was having a really hard time getting into my nail tech and I needed my nails done temporarily by somebody else. I went to a couple different techs, they destroyed my nails. So every time I was getting them done after that, they were breaking off within like a few days of me getting them on. And I was like, okay, clearly my nails are just too weak. I need to take a break. Need to try to get them back to a little bit more of a happy place. So I had them removed. They were in horrible shape, flaking off, just like absolutely terrifying. And I thought it would be a great time to test this out. It had launched recently and I felt jealous when it launched. Cause I was like, oh, I can't really test that out. Cause I have fake nails on, but it all worked out. I am almost completely through this. I just, as you can see, got my nails redone finally because this completely transformed my nails. I was skeptical, I'll be honest, but this works for me. What I love about this is that it's a completely liquid treatment that fully dries down. So it's not a polish or anything like that that you have to like apply and then wait for it to dry and then it can kind of get messed up. It just fully dries. It doesn't add any color or gloss or anything to your nails. And you can apply it several times throughout the day, which is what I was doing. While this definitely didn't do anything like insanely amazing to my nails within the first few days over time with repeated use, I absolutely saw a huge improvement in the health of my nails from using this. All right, let's wrap up this favorites video with lifestyle favorites. Let's talk about these products together because they are the same kind of product. I have been so obsessed with using very specially fragranced detergent in combination with fragrance-free detergent because otherwise this is way too expensive. So the first is the Whey Detergent in Melrose Place. You guys know I am obsessed with the way that this smells. It is a velvety rich rose fragrance, which is interesting because I am not normally a rose girl, with hints of bergamot, lychee, cedarwood, and white musk. Ugh, this smell will not never get old for me. And what I've especially been loving using these for are my bed sheets. Like having bedding that smells this amazing has changed my life. So again, I will do a little bit of this and then fill the rest of the detergent cup up with fragrance free detergent and it makes everything smell incredible. And then the other one right on brand, cause we just talked about this is the not a detergent by Juliet has a gun. So same exact smell. Mm, ugh. I love it. So I'm absolutely loving both of these, but if you guys have any other recommendations for me that you feel like I need to try, please let me know in the comments. Cause like I said, these have changed my life. Something else that has changed my life is this little portable fan. I forget what video I used a different portable fan in, but I remember telling you guys like, wait, hold out because I'm also going to try another one and I don't know which is going to be better. This definitely is because you can get this real high powered and I have been loving using this for my skincare routine. I don't know how I never thought of this before, but this speeds everything up and helps you to be able to move on to the next step more quickly without having to like sit there and wait for it to dry. And if you're somebody that likes to layer a lot of different skincare products, then you know that that drying process can be very tedious. So try this out. Also, before I move on, actually helpful for makeup application steps as well. Mascara, if you layer mascara, if you want your foundation, skin tint, concealer, anything to dry more quickly, this. And it feels very... Nice and refreshing as well, so why not? All right, I have phone cases to share, and I know I shared at least one, maybe a couple phone cases in my last favorites video. I've just really been liking switching them out depending on my mood and like different outfits I'm wearing and the season. I feel like it's kind of similar to nail polish for me where it's just like a way to express 
my personality, and my mood. And these are actually all from the same brand, which is Bobble Bar. They did send these to me in PR, but I mean, well, no, I bought this one myself. They sent these two to me. They originally sent me these, and normally this would not be my kind of thing, but I actually am obsessed with this red and pink. It's just really bold and fun and different, and of course, yours would not say Abby. You can get this customized however you would like it to. I should just get these to say Elsie actually. So they sent me that. They have this available in other colors as well as this one if you were more of a neutral guy or gal. And again, different colors available. This is one that I saw because after I had my moment using this, I was like, I'm ready for something different, something a little spookier and funkier for fall. How cute is this? So I went and purchased this one. Oh my God. Some things to know about them is because they are customizable, they do take a few weeks to ship. So make sure to order in advance if you're going to be doing that. But so many cute phone cases, plenty of others aside from these, I am sure there'll be something that you love. Two drink related things, kind of random for me. The first are these Element Electrolytes. And I can't remember for the life of me why I decided to order these initially. Actually, oh, you know what? Yes, I do. It was before I was gonna go on my friend's bachelorette in Miami and I was like, I want something like liquid IV but without the sugar and I found these. Little did I know they have already been around for a while and people have been raving about them so I certainly didn't discover anything new but I am now addicted. If you are a salt lover, this is gonna be a dream for you. I love how salty they taste, but then like with the different flavors, it kinda tastes like I'm drinking a mocktail, almost. So this one is in the flavor raspberry salt. I really love this one, but my favorite is watermelon. So I would say like watermelon, then raspberry, those are my top two, but my more recent favorite for something totally different is their mango chili one. I went out on a limb buying that because I was like, this could end up being so gross, but that more than anything tastes like a mocktail. It is so good. Perfectly like spicy, smoky. Oh my God, love it. So that one's definitely not something I drink as often because I'm not always in the mood for something like that, but I am always in the mood for something salty and raspberry or watermelony. So good, such a good way to get electrolytes. They aren't cheap, that's the downside. But what can I say? These days I like to spend money on things that make me feel good, like being hydrated. And these, so. I got into a trying to make Starbucks like iced coffee drinks at home. Um, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I was trying to do that a lot this summer and my glass cups were just not hitting the same. I realized there really is something psychological about holding a Starbucks cup. That probably, I mean, I'm sure some of you are like, this is so stupid, you literally bought this to feel like you're drinking Starbucks. But yes, I did. Cause Starbucks is so expensive these days. Like if you were gonna go multiple times a week, oh my God, that adds up fast. So I found these on Amazon. I also wanted them. It's not just because of the Starbucks logo, but because the glass cups I have at home are a lot smaller than these. So I wanted something bigger. It came in a pack with several of these, the lid, the straw, and they're great. Just makes my homemade iced coffee feel a little bit less like it's just from home. Last but not least, we have books. I have two book favorites for this video. I have read several books recently that I just haven't been obsessed with. Like they've been fine, pretty good, but definitely not favorite worthy. This one I know has mixed reviews. I feel like this is gonna be controversial, but you guys, I loved this. This is Happy Place by Emily Henry. I won't read through this whole thing, but basically the premise of this book is a couple that has been together for years and years, ever since they met in college and broke up, but haven't told their friends yet. And then after that it says, which is how they find themselves sharing a bedroom at the main cottage that has been their friend group's yearly getaway for the last decade. So I'm sure you can just imagine, like freshly broken up couple trying to pretend like they're still together in this friend group situation. I really liked it 100% extremely cheesy. So I feel like that's the main complaint with this is people are like, oh my God, it's so cheesy. And I'm like, yes, but that's kind of the nice thing about it. Like it's just one of those reads that is comforting and feel good. So I enjoyed that. And I also really, really loved Paris the Memoir, which is Paris Hilton's book. I actually did that on audiobook, which I really liked because I liked hearing it from her own voice it felt more personal. Her life story 
is absolutely insane. And as somebody that grew up seeing her portrayed in the media as a bimbo, and then as a result thinking like, oh, she must actually be that. It's mind blowing to realize how smart she is and how business savvy she is and that she literally made up the persona that she was portrayed as. Like she is something else. I have so much respect for her and Oh my gosh, the story that she shares about her experience at Provo Canyon. I just got chills because like I have never ever heard anything like that. I had no idea that schools like that for troubled youths, troubled children existed and the abuse that she went through and that so many kids have gone through still chills. My God, it's just like shocking. So I highly recommend that whether you do audiobook or read it hardcover, paperback, and I don't know why I said hardcover. No matter which way you consume that book, so good. All right, you guys, we are going to wrap up this video here. I feel like I was a bit all over the place in this video. I apologize for that. This was kind of a last minute decision to film because I actually have to head out to New York in a couple days for New York Beauty Week. I am doing an event with Sephora there. And that of course throws off my regular filming schedule. So I last minute decided to film this to hopefully make me feel less stressed about the days of work I'm going to miss. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Should we get the doggies in here? Come here. Come here, baby. Quincy, do you wanna say hi first? We have Elsie's best friend. I've said before, Loki, your hair is getting so long, buddy. I love it. This is my sister Emily's dog. He is such a little goofball. He's so cute. Him and Elsie are in love. Like they are best, best friends. And we got our favorite girl, our favorite gal, Elsie. Yes. Say bye everyone. All right, go ahead. Go play with your bestie. And this, which I know you want. Go get it. Oops, that's a terrible throw. Like, subscribe, do everything. All products listed and linked below in order of mention as always. What else? Let's chat in the comments as always. Stay tuned for my next video. It'll be up in a few days, but until then, I hope you have a great few days. All right, crazy kids, let's go play. I know that's what you wanna do. Oh, I see we've torn up a box back here. Whoa.